Alright, so this is a project which has been sitting in the corner of my room now for quite possibly a year and a half, two years, something like that. Uh, and I'm just about to join a company which does stuff um, conceivably a little bit similar. Uh, therefore I need to get on with this project and get it uh, out of the way, just in the uh, interests of there not being any blurred lines with IP and all that type of stuff. So. I'll show you what I've got so far, and this is going to end up being a build series, so it's probably going to take a few weeks um, to go through. So, this is where I'm at right now. I built what you can this uh, frame here, and you can see it's just a very, very rough frame, um, built uh, using tools which are not really appropriate for the job, uh, but it was all good fun. So then I have a hole in it. I've got these two sheets of perspex. So, what is it? It is an air hockey table done in the same style as the tablet. So the idea is that the top layer of perspex is going to have lots of uh, all of the uh, hockey markings and everything marked out uh, throughout and, and so those will be engraved underneath. And then this will have a green LED lighting it up, so all of the uh, the field markings will be in green. And then this one here will be sitting down below it. And the markings for that will be the Funny Hacks logo, and those will be in blue. So you notice there's this hole in it here, and that's for the um, air input. And so this was my original intention was to use this wee fella. Uh, and this is a little battery powered one, you charge it overnight. And I don't know how long it actually runs for, that was one of my concerns. And so the idea for addressing that was if it was too short, I would simply have multiple of them. Um, and then you'd uh, charge them one after the other and hopefully that would give you enough games. And then I happened to find this fella online, and this is um, a full powered one, and um, it gives roughly the same amount of power. I was actually a little bit surprised. Um, this actually, um, if anything, gives slightly more throughput of air than this does. Now, uh, how that actually, how much uh, push it actually gives could actually be quite different, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how they compare in reality. The important thing is that the battery isn't going to go so flat on this one because it doesn't have a battery. Um, the catch, however, though, is that the cooling for this is entirely with the airflow going through. Now, uh, two problems with that. One, if the amount of load I'm putting on it is restricting the airflow sufficiently, then that will mean that uh, this is not getting sufficient cooling to work well. The other problem is that is it actually designed just to be run for very short periods of time? Now, it is sold as an airbed uh, inflator, in which case um, uh, it's very likely it's only intended to be run for a short period of time. When I had a look through the manual, however, they also talk about it being used for a few other things, including things like mini kids' bouncy castles and that type of thing. I'm not sure what... Uh, those actually take quite a lot of uh, air pressure. Um, actually, that might be the wrong way of saying that, but that they need to pump that's very forgiving, which could mean that this is a very good pump. Uh, in my little experimentations with it, it is not, it doesn't have that much force behind it. So, um, but I think it'll be plenty for my purposes. But it all comes back down to, if I'm running this for like half an hour straight, am I going to burn it out? It's cheap. It doesn't really matter too much if I do. Uh, but these are all things to be aware of because if you're uh, if you've got lots of people over and playing with it, then you want to yeah you want your thing to last. So there's the two pumps. This hole. So my original intention was basically to have that wedged in there like that. Uh, that's not going to work with this, but it does actually come with a hose that I can attach. But uh... <laughs> it uh, it does work very nicely. So I'll probably end up using a hose, so then I can attach either one and uh, give them a good comparison. The size of these um, outputs is not the same, so I can't just do one hole that will fit both. Uh, the bit that I was actually reaching for when I knocked everything over was this stuff here. So I was telling you about how the bottom is going to be blue, and that's going to have the Funny Hacks logo. The top is going to be green, and that will have all the field markings. And then the pucks 
and effectively the bats which the people will use um, one of those will be orange and the other one will be uh, probably red um, although I may make it blue or something like that we'll see but effectively the puck I was thinking of making that um, making that yellow so that it will stand out nicely from the green and the blue uh, and I was pondering about uh, making it so that every time there's a motion so that it gets an impact then it changes colour to sort of uh, maybe it goes white or something like that so I thought that would be quite cool oh actually one thing I haven't discussed is uh, what happens on the edge of the table because it's very easy to think about that so there's two things of interest there one is so let's say I screw the perspex onto the wood and that's all onky dory like that blah 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 uh, I then go and put, put a screw here I put a screw here put a screw here and so on and then there's force on there. Now there will be a little bit of force which uh, comes from the air. That's going to be negligible uh, for this conversation. Uh, what is however interesting is that uh, between the wood and the perspex I'm going to have a little bit of um, foam and the idea is to sort of uh, reduce the amount of draft that I, uh, the amount of air pressure that I lose just out the sides. Uh, so then when I go and put that screw on, if I put that on too tight there's a high chance that I'm going to end up cracking the perspex pretty quickly. Also, if someone leans on it, there's a high chance of uh, cracking the perspex pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do to address that is, yeah, I'm going to have that uh, sort of foam or soft stuff of some form um, underneath. But then to screw into it, I'm actually going to have um, these aluminium strips, um, which will then sit on top of there. And those are going to serve two purposes. Those are going to distribute the amount of force which is going onto the perspex, so then it's much less likely to have um, a large amount of force in one particular area, therefore it's less likely to crack. The other thing it's going to serve is it's going to be the boundaries so that the puck has something to bounce off. I played with all sorts of ideas on how I was going to achieve that. Originally I was going to have this sort of uh, rubber piping around the length and I sort of played with how I was going to mount that and eventually I came to the conclusion that if I had that uh, rubber pipe around the edge it would very quickly get uh, knocked off. Like I'd, I'd probably have to glue it in place and that glue would eventually fail. Uh, and repairing it would just look mucky pretty quickly. I think that's everything I have to tell you. <laughs> this video has already gotten really long. Um, as you can probably see, I've uh, done a lot of thinking about it. Um, I think I will leave it for the next video to talk about how I intend to uh, actually power all the different LEDs. Uh, because if you think about uh, how the puck is going to work, that's actually quite interesting. And I've got a really um, a really interesting way of making the puck work, which would um, would serve as quite a gimmick, but uh, it's actually quite a practical way of solving the problem. That's enough talking. Goodbye.